Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on vectoring in Illustrator. Tonight I'm going to be talking about the width tool. Now what the width tool does is it allows you to change the width of a stroke at any point along the stroke. In the type of vectors that I usually do, I have to taper the strokes such as uh, Blossom Forest leg here at the endpoints. As you can see, this right, the width of the actual stroke is 30 points, while the ends of the stroke are zero, as you can see by the smart, uh, smart guide right there in the pop-up. The width tool not only allows you to change the end points, but also anywhere in the point of the stroke. By double-clicking on the stroke itself, I can choose, or this width point edit box pops up, and I can either play around with the boxes here and options or I can type in my own value such as zero. As you can see, change the width between these two points. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how I can edit other things. I've got another um, stroke here. I'm just going to change the width of it to let's say 40 and click and then change it to 40 so it's easily visible. Now if I wanted to taper this I'm just going to come up here and command click so I'm selecting the one anchor point and then I'm going to double click and I'm just going to change it to zero and easy peasy. I now have a perfectly tapered stroke from width of 40 down to a width of zero. Now let's say I wanted to only change the width of one side of this, or if I wanted to get a bit more manual feel to it. What I can do is I can just hold down on this, and then come over and hold down a command and click on the corner. Cursey width tool, you vex me so. Ah, there we go. Okay, by clicking on the corner and dragging, I can change it however I want, and it gets a little bit more of a personal touch to it. In case you can't figure out the numbers and you just want to adjust it by eye, or I can hold down on Alt and do the same thing, and now I'm only controlling one side. This allows you to do the exact same thing, but keep one side at the point you want or adjust them independently. So, the width tool is a very useful bit of programming. So now I'm just going to demonstrate how I taper the strokes on ponies very quickly. As you can see, I have a total of four anchor points between, or for this one leg. Two at the ends, and then one on either side of the hoof. Okay. Um, I don't want the entire front and back of the leg to be a taper between um, point, uh, a six point to a, or a zero point up here at the top to a six point down here at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, another anchor point. And you can add a, a width point as well just by double clicking on the line and setting it. But I prefer anchor points just because I can delete them very easily. So I'm going to add a point, let's say about here. And I encourage you to experiment so that you get a feel of how the width tool works and where you put the anchor points if you do it the way I choose to. Now, I'm just going to double click on this, set it to zero, and there we go. A perfectly tapered point. Now, I'm going to warn you of a glitch um, with the width tool, and I don't believe there's a way to get around it at the moment. If there is, I'll update the video or the comment section. As you can see, I had the entire thing set to six points, but now that I've changed this up here to zero, my stroke isn't entirely at six points anymore. It's getting larger and larger until it gets down here to where the other anchor point is. 
and then it gets to 7, and it keeps going up. Basically, it's kind of like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. It just gets the, um, all the width lost up here just kind of gets pushed around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click on my anchor point, and I'm going to set it to 6. And I'm going to click here and set this to 6. This one to 6 as well. And then my last point, I'm just going to set to 0. You can see sometimes it doesn't always stick. But the more anchor points or width points you have, the smoother it's going to look. But you have to be very careful because if you put too many width points into it, it's going to look very, very wobbly. Now, this little box right here does exactly what it says. Unfortunately, I have not seen it give me any noticeable difference in the way that I work. So it probably works perfectly well. I just haven't um, run across an instance where it does anything for me. Yeah. Adding the extra points, or the extra width points actually uh, caused me a little bit of grief here. Let's see. And if you click on one of these, if you all click on one of these width points, you can hit the delete key and that'll get rid of it. And that is essentially how the width tool works. I'll very quickly uh, oops, go through and fix the width on all of these so you can see it in action in something other than the leg. If there isn't a way to get around this point, then uh, you guys need to go complain to Adobe. If there is, drop me a comment or see me on DeviantArt because I will be linking the completed form of this vector in the comments section, in the description below. Unfortunately, you can't shift click and select multiple width points on here and then change them all at once. It just doesn't work. It would be nice, but, well, we can't always have nice things. This is sort of why paths are very nice. Unfortunately, they're a little bit hard to get right. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to go into isolation mode for this. And if you're not familiar with it, isolation mode is just what it does. Yeah, yeah that's not the one I wanted. I only want yes. isolation mode just puts you into a point where you only edit the selected object. So I had the wing highlighted like that, and clicked up here in the menu, and clicked enter isolation mode, and now I only worry with this. I can't change anything else in the entire image whatsoever. And it seems AI is lagging just a little bit. Okay, well, there we go. And to exit isolation mode icon, I would go to the menu or just hit the escape key. And that is how you taper strokes on a pony and strokes in general. I hope this has been informative. If there's any questions, drop me a line in the comment section or message me on DeviantArt. Have a great night, and I will see you in the next video.